Yeah, so what do I do with my time now? You know, the computer has automated some of my tasks. You know, four decks. Four takes, t takes a lot of time to manage. And uh, you can't just put four of your favorite songs on. That's going to turn into one of your most unfavorite songs very quickly. You, so, you, you know, you really have to start thinking about what I'm playing and where I'm going, how I'm going to get there, how I can layer loops again, how I can bring possibly just bass lines together. You know, it's, it's really changed the, the, the way I've, I've been playing because, you know, in the past I would get a lot of things sent to me, demos or, you know, Mark Hu would send me a, a bed track, hey, this is, is this, what do you think of this idea? But I can actually use that material now. You know, material that may not be ready to be played by itself, but could be a perfect transition or a perfect baseline to someone else's hi-hats. So that's what the beauty of four decks you know, means to me. And that's why you know, I have to allow the computer to do something so I can really focus my attention on that. You know, one of the other you know, super important things of what we're doing now, is if I change to this page here, this is my, my, uh, my clock, which is the, the tempo for how everything's working with my effects and the timing of the records. But there's a really important button here, which I can turn on and off with my key here, which is send. And uh, at the contact shows, this button is actually sending over Ethernet to all the other guys' computers, Mark Hool's uh, computer, Geyser's computer, Jesse Hartzog's computer, and I can stop and start their computers on the fly of their live shows. So when you see it's all up there, this main tractor computer is basically the, the, the heart of the whole setup. It's the timing, the clock. And uh, that allows us to do this type of collaborative experience. That timing code is going over the ethernet, keeping all those guys in time. And then the contact show gets, it gets even more complicated because we have our four decks, then we have Mark's music coming through a channel, Geyser's music, you know, Jesse's music, plus an extra four channels of effects. All that in time. Sorry, I can't try and keep time of all that shit. Forget it. You've got to let technology do what it does best on that situation. And then it comes to us to be really creative about when we're bringing up things, how we're moving from one live show to another, how we're bringing two live shows together, or how we're overlaying live shows to records. You know, that's, that's the heart of, you know, why I'm using this, what this allows us to do. And in, in a way, it's given us the opportunity as artists, you know, uh, especially the Minus Gang, to do uh, a show that we could have never really done, you know, a couple of years ago. Well, we could have, but it w would have been a little bit hard, you know what I mean? So it's, it's really... You know, again, what technology means, you know, for me, it's like it allows an artist to become uh, or, you know, delve into a different area of creativity and hopefully come up with something that wasn't possible before. One of the most important things you have to worry about when you're using, you know, especially for decks is time. You know, you don't want to waste time finding music and you don't want to uh, waste time, you know, making sure it's the right track or finding the right part of the, of the record you want to play. So, you know, it's very easy to go through all my, my uh, folders here to find the tracks. I have hot keys to jump up and down to the top of my file structures. And then as soon as I found a track to load, you know, I pick my, my, my deck here, one, two, three, or four, load it, load it into one, and we're there. That's fast, but you know, as a, as a turntablist, originally, one of the things that I love to do is like, put the, the record on, or even, you know, with Tractor Scratch, put the track on and then quickly skip through it and find out which part I wanted to play. Or, to be honest, sometimes make sure it was the, the track I thought it was. And uh, I found a really great way to do that now. Once I load the track in, I have one knob here, which actually lets me scan through the track really quickly. And what's really cool is that I can actually play this track in my, in my headphones. It's in sync to what's playing to the people. And at the same time, skip through the track. And make sure it's the right one or find the part I want to start at. And then, you know, I don't even have to restart it. I can be like, okay, let's bring it up. It's on time. You know, or you know, quickly jump back to the beginning of the track and do an even more creative mix. But, you know, that's just one of the hardest things of moving into digital DJing, especially without turntables, is really like, how do I find the tracks and how do I scan through it? And, and for me, this kind of like rapid scan is, is unbelievable. You know, it really helps me manage the amount of music coming out and the amount of music in my computer and four decks going at once.